we thank you. You spoke of increase for us this year. There was good increase last year. And we're expecting more, much more than what we experienced last year. Father, let there be a capping of the things you started last year and beyond last year. This year, we open our doors to good things, to inflows. Let your heavens, O oh God, remain open over us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we come reverently before your eternal holy word. Your word is you speaking to us. Let the entrance of your word give us light and give us understanding. Open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of thy word. We are strangers on earth. Hide not your commandments from us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, on Wednesday, I started a teaching on breaking delays and attrition. So I, I want to conclude on that today. Breaking delays and attrition. Breaking delays and attrition. Um, let's look at the text we used again. Numbers 21 verse 4. Numbers 21 verse 4. Then they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. The King James, get switch over to the King James. The King James says, because of the way. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. It was prolonged, it was tough, it was rough. They became discouraged on the way. Proverbs 13, 12. Proverbs 13, verse 12. Hope, de hope deferred or delayed makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. When hope is deferred, is delayed, it affects the heart. That's what happened to those Jews. Um, but when the desire comes, it's a tree of life. Go back to New King James. Then Ephesians 6, 11 and 12. Ephesians 6, 11 and 12. Fi Let me take it from verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Against the cunning of the devil. Against the schemings of the devil. He's a master trickster. Very cunning creature. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the high places. He advises again, therefore take unto you the whole armor of God. First Thessalonians 2 18. First Thessalonians 2 18. Paul says, Therefore, we wanted to come to you, writing to the Thessalonians. Therefore, we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, even I, Paul, time and again, but Satan hindered us. Those delays came naturally, but at some point he realized that it was Satan that was behind it. When he said, we proposed, we proposed to come to you, we are tempted to come to you time and again. He wasn't saying two times. He said several attempts we made. But Satan hindered us. Satan hindered us. Some delays are satanic. Some delays are human. It's only divine delay that is beneficial. When you want to move and God says, hold on. 
Paul wanted to move into Asia. The Holy Spirit told him, don't move. He made to move into India. The Holy Spirit told him, don't go. So he stayed. And then one night, he had a dream and saw a man of Macedonia standing and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. That's because God had a different plan from what he was trying to do. So divine delays are beneficial. But when the delay is human, when the delay is satanic, it makes us lose ground. And the benefits of what we would have done in that season. Remember, God makes everything beautiful in his time. Ecclesiastes 3.11. Ecclesiastes 3.1 says to every purpose there is a time or a season. A time and a season. To everything there is a season. And a time for every purpose under the heaven. So Satan tries to, when the purpose of God for a thing arrives, Satan will do everything in his power to stop it. When it was time, after 400 years, God told them they will, that nation was going to maltreat them for 400 years. After 400 years and 430 years, Satan did not still want the children of Israel to leave Egypt. When the agitation came, when they became restless through uh, Moses, when Moses began to attempt that thing, and they, they uh, you know, they, he said that these people are, is because they don't have work to do. And he increased their rigor. And he was hell bent on keeping them in Egypt, even when it was time for them to leave. Are you here? Eh? Satan wants to take everything God has endowed it with and use it for his own agenda. So he will see an intelligent man, he will give you a wrong business. He will see somebody that is entrepreneurial, he will take that person's talent and wants to use it for a wrong purpose. So even when, when especially when it's God's time, so he says that these people want to be delivered. He gave an instruction to begin to kill all the male children. When it was time for the Messiah to be born, immediately Herod heard about it. He ordered the killing of all the male children. Born that year. He backdated it to two years to make sure he caught up with the Messiah. So he wants to delay God's purpose because it will bring blessings to mankind. Are you here? Are you here? Lift up your right hand and say, I will not be delayed anymore. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. No more delay. Whether it's coming from me or coming from Satan, I will not be delayed any further. We must push things by faith and by authority now. So we saw that delay is a tactic of the devil. A great and effectual day has been said before me, but there are many adversaries. Opportunities, great opportunities have been said by God before me, but there are many adversaries. 1 Corinthians 16, 9. So we looked at that, and then we looked at two cases of people that um, we are tempted with delay. One was in Judges 19. A man went to take back his concubine and ran away. And when he went there, the father-in-law was very happy. He said, why don't you stay with us three days? He stayed three days. They were eating and drinking and marrying. After the three days, the father-in-law told him, he said, this, this, this party is sweet. Why don't you stay another day? He stayed another day. Four days now. After the fourth day, the father-in-law said, why don't you stay? This, thing, this, this fellowship is getting better. Another day, the man said, I have to go. He delayed him until it was late. And then he left late that day. Before he got to Jebus, it was getting to night. He had to sleep on the way. And that's how one of the biggest catastrophes took place in Israel. That thing, that delay, what it caused in Israel. That's how Benjamin had to fight with the rest of the tribe. They almost wiped out the Benjamites. And the Benjamites killed the, his other Israelites. Eh? And those people can fight. The son of my right hand. They can fight. Why? Because one man in one corner, remote corner, allowed himself to be delayed on a private mission. 
Then we go to Genesis 24. And we see when Abraham sent his servant to get a wife for Isaac. And the man prayed and trusted God to lead him and guide him. And God led him to, uh, um, uh, he found out it was Rebekah. Then he met with the family. And then after settling everything, he had paid the bride price and all this. They said, please, please, just stay for at least 10 days. Let us spend time with, 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 with uh, Rebecca and you before you go. He said, listen. Okay, first of all, they f set food before him. When he knew that this, this is the, the, the girl that God had led him to. They set food before him. He said, let's eat. He said, I will not eat anything. I will sit down until I tell my mission. He had a sense of mission until I say why I'm here. I declare why I'm here. I know whether you people are going to favor me or not or give me what I'm here for. So when he said, he said the thing is of God, that's when they now ask, why don't you stay Allah? Let's stay for 10 days. You've been with her all your life. The man said, hinder me not. In other words, de don't delay me for the Lord has prospered my way. Can you lift up your right hand and say, Satan, don't delay me. The Lord has prospered my way. He didn't allow himself to suffer a delay like, unlike the other man. And his mission was successful. Very, very successful. Delays, they say, can be dangerous. They are in that Judges chapter 19. I have not seen a more dangerous delay than that one. A, a prophet was told by God, a young prophet, be, be careful about old prophets nowadays. Some of them, some of them, I, I, you don't know what they're doing anymore. They, 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 the fact that somebody used that man from 1930 to 2020 uh, uh, does not mean he's still current. Open your eyes, judge by the scriptures. Many of them, I don't know what they're doing now. God sent a young prophet to go and prophesy against an altar in Bethel. He said, when you go there, prophesy and command that altar to break. And then come back straight. Don't stop anywhere. He went there, began to prophesy, and the altar broke, split. And the king stretched forth his hand to strike him, and his hand got paralyzed. He couldn't return his hand. That hand he stretched to slap that young prophet. He couldn't return it. That young prophet had to have mercy on him and restore his hand. As that young prophet was returning, in accordance with the instruction of God, an old prophet that was in that city where he went to break the altar in Bethel, how that there was a young prophet that came to do this. Why was the old prophet there and God sent a young prophet from elsewhere? And so he sent, he sent his servant, go and call that young prophet. They went and called him and he made the mistake of turning back. Are you here? He got delayed. He died for it. They, they called him, they said, the, 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 the professor, senior prophet, so and so, said, yeah, we should call you. So they, they, and he came there. God told him, don't eat anything. He came there. The man, he, said, he, said, he, said, he said, an angel spoke to me last night to call you and feast you. And, uh, so he ate. An angel, God spoke to the young prophet. An angel spoke to the old prophet and he listened to the old prophet out of respect. The, the woman said, na, na shame or how do I put it? Timidity people, they take chop poison. Make I know harm this person's feeling. Now, in, now some people, they try. You know saying a poison, but if I not take it now, uh, if I not take this food now, they, it's like disrespecting them. Now some people, they chop poison. So he ate. And as he was going, a lion just came out of the bush and killed him, killed that young prophet because he disobeyed God. And then the lion stayed there, didn't eat him. And people were passing, saw the lion standing by the because it had just killed. That's unusual. So when the old prophet heard it, he said, okay, that's the young prophet that I spoke to. You see? He said, God has killed him for disobeying God. Old prophet. God has killed him. Some are, some are no more current. Nami, they tell you. Nami, they tell you. Be careful. I'd rather look for a young man that had just come out of the wilderness and this hot, uh, with the word of God in his mouth, not an old prophet counting on experience. So that man said, do not hinder me, for the, see, God has prospered my way. I don't want any delay. He was focused on his mission. 
So 1 Thessalonians 2.18, we tried several times to come to you, Paul, even me, Paul, but Satan hindered us. That word hinder means to cut in, to impede, to detain. Satan is held. Do you know what it means to detain somebody? It's not only when you take him to police station. Can I have somebody here? Can I have somebody? Just one person. Okay. Okay. Attempt to go. Where do you want to go? All right, go. Go, now move. Don't let your clothes. What am I doing? This is detention and detaining him. It's not when you put handcuffs on him only. You're holding him back from moving. That's detention. So Satan has ways of playing with people and circumstances and good advice. Good advice. Good excuses to delay anybody. He will create circumstances. Now that day, the, that mission that is very important, now that day, the car will get problem. There was a trip. I went to the east with my family. That time, the children were small. Rotech was not born. Chidi was small. He was still a toddler, very small. We went to the east for a break. Coming back, our vehicle, the, the battery was running down. What, that, how many of you remember that uh, Volvo Coupe? And uh, that Volvo. Battery would run down. We got to Benin. We slept in Benin. We fixed the vehicle, finished to took off from begin, Benin. When we got to Ore, between Ore and the border, you know that place? Grrr. We slept two nights on the way from the east. Now, but before that trip, thank you, I had a dream and while we were in the village, a young man, very fair, able-bodied young man, with a very sharp chisel was around the vehicle before we even, three days before we set out, around that vehicle, you know, and I was trying to get him out of the way, but I was being careful so that that chisel, very sharp chisel he had, wouldn't wound me. So I knew we were going to suffer attack, and I told my wife, I prayed, maybe I prayed too casually, or maybe my prayer prevented what the devil actually wanted to do. So we slept in Benin, we slept in a hotel. I went to a man of God there, told him this. Uh, he checked us into a hotel. We left now. They repaired the, the thing. It started charging. We, between the border, you know that jungle area? The thing, brrr, we are in the middle. And when you have a prayer, you see these towing vans begin to lock around. I'm telling you about how Satan can delay you. But, so... Eventually, we towed that vehicle and we were to tow it to Lagos. But you know these people, they won't tell you what they have in mind. And the danger we faced that day, when he reached a police station, where he was towing us now, police checkpoint, they waved him, he slowed down. Before they could come, he zoomed off, towing a vehicle. They start, the policeman started chasing us in another vehicle, waving his pistol. I was waving to this man, stop, stop, stop. He was still going until the man double-crossed us and, and stopped us. He said that if not that he saw that I was trying to stop him, that he would have shot at us. So he told him, when we got to Jebode, there is that filling station there. We didn't know those people had a plan of sleeping there last night. They didn't continue. It was now night. We slept in that filling station. The children slept inside. I slept on the bonnet. That night. So we slept there. The next day, the, he now told us back, to Lagos, and then there, were, there is a, an auto electrician that lives close, uh, used to work very close to us. So I called him and said, look at what happened. He said we should have called him, that he would have come there. He said I should give him 50 naira. I gave him 50 naira. He bought super glue and came, and there was something he glued in the alternator, and that was it. That's what kept us two nights on the road with young children. And the grace God gave us anything we gave children, he ate. Anything we gave him, he, he ate on that. It, 50 naira. You see how Satan plays mambo? That, that alone, just one thing, he will expose you to danger. Waste your time. Waste the time of those with you. 
So in any way he's trying to detain you, in any way he's detaining you, you know where you're not where you ought to be now. You know you ought to be moving along a certain line, but this thing has kept you back. That's what we are breaking. We are breaking it for the ministry. We are breaking it for individuals. We are breaking every delay and attrition. It is written, hinder me not, for the Lord has prospered my way. Isaiah 10, 27 said, it shall come to pass on that day that his burden shall be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing of the Holy Spirit destroys satanic delays. After Zerubbabel was delayed in that work for 16 years, the work ceased. And then they restarted it through prophecies of the prophecies of Haggai and Zechariah. Then God sent a message to Zerubbabel. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Saying, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. The anointing destroys every yoke, including yokes of delay. Satan can keep a young man in one spot, playing games on, on certain things, maybe a crucial exam he's to pass or whatever, or a relationship with his father. He, will keep, he can keep you there for that 20 years. You've not made one inch progress. And you may not realize it. Luke 4, 18 and 19. Jesus stood and read, from the, opened the Bible and read, and the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty, freedom to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. The anointing destroys every yoke, including the yoke of stagnation, the yoke of delay, the yoke of attrition. We talk about attrition shortly. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And so Satan can delay your blessing. And Sarah was barren. And Rebecca was barren. And Rachel was barren. He can delay business breakthrough. You see, this thing is almost within reach. But he keeps day by day delaying the process. Orchestrating things, delaying the process. Jumping on the shoulders of people that have roles to play and delaying them. Israel sojourned in a strange land for 430 years. And when God said, let my people go, Satan did not still want them to go. So he's not tired of holding them in detention. If some of us, we exercise the kind of persistence that Satan exercises, half of it, we will have major breakthroughs. Human beings, Christians, give up easily. We think, because we have this miracle mentality to life. They just press a button and then they realize, I become a millionaire. Are you a thief? Are you a bank robber? Many Christians don't believe in process and rigor. The life there is rigor. You have to work. Because we, somehow, from the pulpit, we've been taught that uh, it's just a miracle and you become a millionaire. It's a miracle and all your debts will be cancelled. What if God decides not to cancel it and wants you to pay? Are you hearing me? He may want you to pay. And so he has to give you the funds. So you have to go through the process. Most every most life run on miracles. Most miracles are for crisis points. It's not the normal way life runs. The law that runs this earth is love, sowing and reaping. The law of Genesis is that every, every seed reproduces after its kind. 
plow your field, sow your seed, there will be a harvest. That's the normal way. It's not always that God wants to send manna from heaven. So if you live your life expecting man always, it doesn't come like that, like that. We live in a natural environment. There are laws that govern. No food for lazy man. If you're not ready to work hard, you'll always be in crisis. If you're not ready to work, a young man was carrying a bag and moving around. Moving around, he's doing evangelism from one businessman's office to another. I told him, my friend, why don't he say God told him not to walk? Why don't you say God told him he shouldn't walk? And then you're carrying a bag like uh, some religious people that, that carry bags and, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. And God told you not to walk. A young man in his 20s, late 20s then, God told you not to walk. So what did he tell you to do? Carry bag and be moving around. Israel had to be moved out of Egypt by the strong hand of God. It wasn't by negotiation. It wasn't by hoping. It was by active faith and exercise of authority and display of the gifts of the Spirit. Pharaoh did not want them to go. He was benefiting from them. Look at Exodus 6 1. Exodus 6 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. That's what it takes. You have to force it. You have to force that situation to break that delay. Is there any violent person here today again? Now you see what I do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand, he will let them go. I'm going to force it. And with a strong hand, he will drive them out of his land. It's not by hoping. Exodus 13, 9. And it shall be a sign to you on your hand and a memorial between your eyes. That the lost law may be in your mouth. For with a strong hand, the Lord has brought you out of Egypt. Not with his gloves. Deuteronomy 26, 8 and 9. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. He's talking a mighty display of his power. Great authority. Moses, stretch out your hands. What is he telling him? Use your authority. Child of God, stretch out your hand. What's God telling you? Use your authority. As a child of God, you have the right to use the name of Jesus. That's your authority. That's the authority of the believer. Go in his name. Do this in his name. Do that in his name. Use your authority. Use your authority. Everything is not about praying to God. God gave us power, authority. And when we exercise authority, the power of the Holy Spirit backs us up. The dunamis of the Holy Spirit backs up our exousia. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Several years ago, when I was working in another ministry, we had a meeting. There were a lot of squabbles over the land then. We had a meeting with a police commissioner then in Nikoi. Who, she was living in Nikoi. And... Um, 
I went there with the building committee chairman then, an architect. We were to bring her to the office. We came with her. So we were in our own vehicle. She was in a police vehicle. And then we got to Third Mainland Bridge. That was the time there was, used to be a lot of traffic on it. And the whole place was jammed. We were coming from Ikoi to Antonia area. And we were there for some minutes. And then the woman put on the lights and put on her siren. And that thing began to blow. When the road began to clear. Within minutes, we were in our destination. God spoke to me that day and said, that's what happens to the believer. He said, if you don't use your authority, you will suffer like every other person. He said, nothing moved until she exercised authority. Did you get what I'm saying? He used that thing to illustrate to me what authority can do. In the realm of the spirit, the man with authority will stop the man with power. Authority rules in the realm of the spirit. Have you ever seen a, an ordinary policeman, even last man, stand in the road and stop a, a trailer? Have you ever seen it? Did the trailer stop? Why? He saw that uniform. That uniform told him this is a person of authority. In terms of dynamics, that man can't stand that trailer. But authority stopped him. Lift up your rod. Moses, why are you crying to me? Why are you? It's not time to, for 40 days and 40 nights again. Tell the children of Israel to move forward. But you lift up your rod and divide the sea. Use your authority. I gave you a rod. Use it. That rod is a stick until you use it. It's a stick until you use it. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terror and with signs and wonders. Verse 9. Deuteronomy 26, 8 and 9. He has brought us to this place and has given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. He brought them out. He succeeded in bringing them into the land of promise. But it took power. It took force. They had to force it, their exit from Egypt. They have to force their entry into Canaan. Are you here? You have the power, authority. Use it. Use it. So let's talk briefly about attrition on their land. Second Kings chapter 6, verses 24 and 25. Second Kings chapter 6. And it happened after this that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his army and went up and besieged Samaria. We prayed a lot. A lot of these things have been dealt with. We do a more proper oppression. And then, I will release you into the hands of God. Commend you to his grace. His goodness and his mercies. You will experience the grace of God in a mighty way this year. Because this is the year of grace. I'm telling you, you rely on his grace. Rely on his spirit. Um... And there was a great famine in Samaria. No, go back to 25, 24 rather. And it happened after this that ben a king of Syria, gathered all his army and went up and besieged Samaria. Waged war against them. And there was a great famine in Samaria. And indeed, they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for 80 shekels of silver. Remember, they were not even to eat donkeys at all. It's a, it's a forbidden animal for Israel, Israel, Israelites to eat. Do you know? Eh? Now, they are buying even the head for so much. Because there was scarcity because of the siege. Don't you know there is a siege in Nigeria? The pressure. A siege is sustained warfare, attack, or pressure. Pressure has been sustained on Nigerians for over 80 years.
until a donkey's head was sold for 80 shekels of silver. And one fourth of a cab of those droppings of those dung is a wild vegetable. For five shekels of silver, a wild vegetable. Things became tough because of the siege. And it was a war of attrition. They were not attacking them to overrun them at that moment. What they did was they surrounded the city. They surrounded it, did not allow them to go out and, uh, or come in. No, they stopped all commercial activities. And we are wearing out their strength gradually. Before you know it, you've eaten what you have in the house and there is nothing to, nowhere to buy. It was a war of attrition. They held them in there. Those four lepers, that's why they were saying, if we go back into the city, we will die of hunger. The people there are already dying of hunger. There was no war, physical fighting taking place. But they were held in, in a war of attrition. Hedged in. Until, in a war of attrition, the enemy wants to wear out your strength gradually. Wear out your confidence gradually. Wear out your resources and supplies gradually until you're so vulnerable like a sitting duck before he comes with the final onslaught. It's a tactic of reducing your strength or effectiveness by sustained attack of, of pressure. And you begin to lose your confidence. Your confidence begins to erode before he comes. When he sees you're weak enough, now you can't, if he moves in, then he moves in for the final strike. That's a war of attrition. And Satan can hold you in one area of your life in a war of attrition until you lose confidence, not only in that area, but in other areas of your faith. Can anybody relate to what I'm saying? Sometimes you have to fight your way back to confidence. Can anybody relate to what I'm saying? Until, that, that was the situation there where, until women began to use their children for, as cooperative uh, articles. Bring your child, let's eat him today. Tomorrow I bring my own. That, it was that war of attrition. They were eating things they were forbidden to eat. They were eating donkeys now. Not only the donkey, they were by even the head. I'm sure they were eating even dog's head. They said dog head, meat no down. So when you are a stingy person, they go, say this one, a dog head or meat no down. They say, where they describe people? Have you ever heard that language, the Hebrews? He said, he said that man, leave him, now you're not a dog head. They say meat, no dead dog head. Not true? Eh? He said a dog head, you can, you, he said you won't get anything out of it. Unlike Ishe, you see? So they were eating even things, even wild vegetables, they, anything they could lay their hands on, provided it doesn't kill, they will eat it, including their children, by a war of attrition. That siege will break today in your life and in your family in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. So break that detention. In Deuteronomy, where we've read, and in Exodus, they... God broke that by a strong hand and an straight arm. In Matthew eleven twelve, the Bible says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffers violence. Violent assault comes against the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is always being bombarded. He said, but the violent take it by force. Another translation says, forceful men, forceful men lay hold on it. Lay hold on it. Driver. And bringing you out of Egypt and taking into a land flowing with milk and honey, true or false. But that land was occupied. They had to displace those inhabitants and some were giants. Sometimes we blame these Old Testament believers. 
Eh, they were afraid of the giants. When we, even when we preach, they were afraid. If not you, you see a man with six, six fingers on each hand and six, six toes on each leg. You say, here. Yeah. You don't go fear. <laughs> when, when you look at the spear of Goliath, you don't go fear. What do you think? What do you think made Saul afraid? He took the supernatural power of God coming over David. And he stand on covenant. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He said, This is not a covenant person with God. He said, Dog. He sized him up spiritually. That's what he takes. Physically, David was a dwarf before Goliath. Size up that challenge. So who, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, Zechariah 4, 6. Say, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 7. Who art thou, O great mountain? Who are you, Goliath? Look at that challenge and decide today you are overthrown. Stand on the authority of the word of God. Is anyone here? Stand on the authority of the word. Say, who are you a great? The Zerubbabel's mountain was, was a mountain of human challenge, obstacles thrown in their way by human beings using governmental authorities and all these things. Your mountain could be another thing. Who are you? Oh, great mountain. He didn't demean the size of the mountain. It was, a non, it was a big challenge. But before Zerubbabel, you shall be made a plan. You're coming down. You mountain, you're coming down. You mountain, you're coming down. Determination. In Matthew 18, 18, it calls us to use our authority. Whatever you bind on earth, heaven will bind. Whatever you lose on earth, heaven will lose. In other words, what you bind and restrain and detain, heaven will detain it. And what you allow, heaven will allow it. You have that authority. Can you lift up your hands and say, I have the authority of the name of Jesus. I have the right the power of our Tony to use his name as my authority and I will use it in the name of Jesus I will command and the powers that be will hear me and they will obey in Jesus name Amen we will use that authority we will use that authority Mark yourself with the blood of Jesus. Mark your ground with the blood of Jesus. When the devil sees the blood, he passes over you. Isaiah 58. From verse 1, he's talking about the fast that will have effect. From verse 1, he told them about why they were fasting and it was not effective. Let's leave that. Let's go to verse 6 to 9. In verse 6, from verse 6, he tells them this is the way to fast, to be effective. Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness. Are you hearing me? We are focused on delays and attrition. We are focused on removing hindrances. Hindrances in all their forms. And one of the ways that Satan hindered, he can come by violence and stop somebody. He has afflicted with people with sickness and stopped them. He has attacked people with accidents. He has attacked people with curses, spells. But one of the ways he attacks, he destroys purposes, is delays. And this one seems harmless. It seems less threatening. It happens in natural settings. Okay, they said that it won't happen today. Next week, after next week, one week, come next week. Before you know it, one week don't turn to one year. That's when you begin to realize what, 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 what's all this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
A lot of things we have done, but we mop up things and trust God. The rest is in his hands. Are you here? So, in the fast that God has chosen, we must use our authority and lose the bonds of wickedness and undo the heavy burdens and let the oppressed go free and break every yoke. Are we on course? Are we on course? Verse 7. Verse 7. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring your, to your house the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked that you cover him and hide not, and not hide yourself from your own flesh. Eight, then your light shall break forth speedily like the morning. Light will come. Wisdom will come. Understanding will come. Knowledge will come. You will know. You will read the situation for what it is. You will know what to do. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. The fast that God accepts affects our health. It, it makes our health to flourish. And your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, take away the yoke. Who will take away the yoke? We take away the yoke. Then when we call God, we can easily plant with God. But he gave us the authority to take away those yokes and break them. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger, strife, while you're fasting, and speaking wickedness. No, speak the word of God. Trim your mouth. So, while we fast, we must damage what Satan has set up. We understand that, isn't it? So, apply the blood. Speak the word to your situation. Use your authority. Sing songs of deliverance. But let's agree, delay is not allowed now anymore. Are we agreed? Refuse delay. Break the impasse. We talk, you hear people talking of impasse. There is an impasse between government and the labor part and the labor union. Impasse. That means a situation in which progress is not possible. <laughs> we are breaking every impasse. In Luke 1.37, the Bible says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. Break up your fallow grounds. Decide nothing will keep me on the spot anymore. I shall see accelerated progress this year. Nothing will hinder my family. Nothing will hinder my children. Nothing will hinder my finances anymore. Nothing will hinder the finances of Olivet Bible Church anymore. Nothing will hinder our progress and growth anymore. We take that stand. God gave us the authority to break that thing. Then we can plant with him. Then the going can be easier. Not driving through potholes and mounds of sand and stuff. Giving thanks. Giving thanks. How many of us want to see us move faster? How many of us want to move faster? It is possible. It's God that has laid us this way in this fast. What you thought not possible in business is possible. If you're, I was discussing several years ago over 20 years ago, about 20 years ago, with a, a pastor who was supplying us some small, small security gadgets. And he was telling me that those gadgets are made in Israel. And there was something he said that I have not forgotten. He said that the Jews tell him that if the mind can perceive it, then that you can create it. He said, if, you, if the mind can perceive it, conceive it. If, if, you, if the mind can just see that thing as a possibility that you can create it. If your mind has seen success, that means success can be created in your life. If your mind can conceive increase, imagine it. 
Albert Einstein said something. He said imagination is more powerful than knowledge. Imagination takes you beyond the known, what you're used to. In the school of architecture, they tell us dream the dream. Just don't think of the costs yet. Just dream. So you create fantasies. All kinds of fantasies. You say, don't think of the cost. Say, dream what is possible. If your mind can think of that breakthrough, if it can come to your mind, then it's possible. Ephesians 3.20 says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we think or ask or pray, right? Asking is praying. Are thinking and are asking. If you can think of it, God can do beyond that. If, he can con if your mind can conceive it, God can exceed that boundary of your mind in delivery. So all things are possible to him who believes. Choose to believe. Choose to believe. If you've not been a part of our prayer in this season, jump into the train right away. Be an 11th hour believer and benefit from what we have been doing in the past 21 days. A lot of water has passed under the bridge, but you can still get something this moment. Give God thanks. Give God thanks. Blessed assurance. Giving thanks. Giving thanks for how he has been with us. For the strength. For the help of the Holy Spirit. For hearing us. For listening to us. For a start. For hearing us. For answering our prayers. Giving thanks. Give thanks. With our